This video shows the kidney biopsy procedure at Haukeland University Hospital. The patient has been well informed and is lying in the same bed as the biopsy will be done. The first thing we do is looking at the right kidney using the liver as the window allowing us to judge the echogenicity of the kidney. It's important to measure the length from pole to pole, and this is typically 10 centimeters or more in adult people. And the width of the parenchyma is usually more than 10 millimeter. The same procedure is done on, on the left kidney using the spleen as a window, and the length, again, should be 10 centimeter or more, and the parenchyma, which is the black part here, should be 10 millimeters or more. After this procedure, the patient turn around and is now in the position for the biopsy. It's always easier to look at the details of the kidney from the back side, allowing us to secure the best position. Here we can see the black parenchyma, which is cortex plus medulla, and the central whitish part, which is the pelvis of the kidney. Here is what we need for the biopsy. Everything is well prepared with sterile towers to the left, two syringes with anesthetics. It's important to divide the anesthetic procedure in two syringes, 10 milliliter each, and lidocaine is usually used. This is a scalpel for putting a hole in the skin, and uh, to the right part is a white kit allowing enough space for the biopsy needle. Usually we use a 16 gauge needle. We can see the needle to the right and the biopsy gun and also the sterile gel, which is important to use to avoid air bubbles between the ultrasound probe and the skin. The nurse is doing the disinfection properly and then we are re ready for the procedure. The sterile towels are covering the area, allowing enough space for the ultrasound probe in between. Sterile gel. The patient is breathing calmly and the conversation should be in a relaxed tone. She is well prepared that she will feel a little bit pain when the anesthetic is put for the first time. After that the goal is that there should be no pain during the procedure. The whole procedure is done under continuous visualization of the ultrasound screen. Here is the first syringe with anesthetic and we can see the tip of the needle going all the way down to the kidney capsule. This is done twice and allows sufficient anesthetic material and also allowing enough time for the anesthetic to work. Now we are ready for, the bi ready for the biopsy procedure and the needle is placed in the biopsy gun. A 
hole in the skin for the needle tip. And then we are ready for the biopsy. Again, with full control of the ultrasound screen, and the sector is showing us where the needle will come. The patient is breathing calmly. We can see the needle in the upper left corner in small movements to and fro advancing the needle tip towards the kidney, towards the lower pole where the density of uh, arteries is lowest, making the lowest, lowest risk for bleeding after the procedure. In the experium, we are doing the biopsy. There we go. In slow motion, you can see the track of the needle in a perfect position. Afterwards, we are doing a control ultrasound recording. We may use Doppler as well, which could easily show us if there was immediate bleeding. Taking out the biopsy needle and opening it, <laughs> allowing for the biopsy specimen, which typically is around 20 millimeters, typically also a little bit elastic and reddish in color, placing it under the stereo microscope, which will allow more details in the judgment of the material to find out if this is representative preferably with material from cortex and medulla. And this stereo microscope picture can be transformed to the computer and later on to the patient record. It's important to allow enough material to the right fixatives. Sometimes we have two biopsy specimens, sometimes a big biopsy can be divided in two pieces. One for formaldehyde, which is the fixative for the routine exam, and the other for the fixative to the left, which is McDonald's fixative, which is glutaraldehyde, which is the best fixative for later processing into electron microscopy method. Here we can see it on the computer where we see the whole cylinder. The upper right part is the cortex and the middle and lower left part is from medulla and in the cortex we can see reddish small glomeruli here and the parts are divided by two arteries actually here is one and here is another In a greater magnification, we see a lot of typical normal reddish glomeruli. And here are typical sphingolipid loden glomeruli, which is typical for Fabry disease. The stereo microscopy method is also good for inspecting erythrocyte cast, very sensitive method. 
The patient is observed for 12 hours and before release from the hospital a new ultrasound exam is done.